Hi everyone, Nick here. Welcome back to my channel. Various research studies have determined that 80 to 90% of investment returns can be attributed to asset allocation, while less than 5 to 10% can be attributed to market timing and stock picking. While 10x stock videos and speculation on the next market crash may be trendy, they're relatively meaningless compared to asset allocation. Asset allocation is the most important investment decision. In this video, I'm going to give you a crash course on asset allocation and modern portfolio theory. There are 200 page books written on these concepts. I've read several of these books and research papers. I've selected what I think is most relevant and I'm going to teach it to you in less than 20 minutes. This is what I do on my channel. I spend hours researching investing and distill it down to what I believe is most important to all of us. I want to help you achieve financial independence. The cost to you is nothing. I just ask that you smash the like button and subscribe to support free financial education. We're going to start with the goal of investing in asset allocation. What do most of us want to get from investing? We want the security and freedom of financial independence. We want our investment portfolio to cover our expenses. Some people may have additional goals like leaving a legacy or a mark on the world by funding causes they value. It's important to keep these end goals in sight. This asset allocation is about managing the risk and return trade-offs of your portfolio so you can increase the odds of achieving your investment goals. An easy way to think about risk is with the risk curve. The concept is that higher risk leads to higher returns. For instance, bonds are generally less risky than stocks. As you add more risk, you expect a higher return, or it wouldn't be rational to take the extra risk. At some point, you will also want to consider if the extra risk is worth taking. Let's say you have two possible investment strategies. Let's say strategy one will give you a 20% return, but it only has a 50% chance of meeting your investment goals. Strategy two gives you a 10% return, but has a 95% chance of meeting your goals. Strategy one will allow you to reach your goal faster, but you have a high chance of failure. Asset allocation is about estimating this risk return trade-off to craft a portfolio that best fits your risk appetite and goals. Modern portfolio theory is a study of efficient asset allocation based on academic research by Harry Markowitz in the 1950s. This research was revolutionary and won Markowitz the equivalent of a Nobel Prize in economics. The basic premise of this research is that the risk of an investment should not be considered in isolation, but in the context of the risk and return of the entire portfolio. The research shows how an investor can construct a portfolio using different asset classes to deliver the same return with less risk or a higher return with comparable risk. The main asset classes are stocks, bonds, real estate, and alternatives. Each of these can be subdivided. For example, stocks can be divided into US and international. You could divide them even more by sector, market, and so on. The concept of constructing a portfolio with better risk-adjusted returns is very important to increasing the odds of achieving your investment goals. At this point, you might be saying, Nick, this sounds great, but it all sounds like magic and I don't understand how it works. I'm going to go through a couple examples to show you how this works. The first thing we need to understand is rebalancing and how it impacts the returns in your portfolio. Let's say your asset allocation called for 50% US stocks and 50% in international stocks. Now let's say, in the first year, U.S. stocks return 30%, and 
and international stocks returned negative 10%. Then in the next year, US stocks lost 10% and international stocks gained 30%. The compounded return of these two investments individually are the same at 8.17%. If you held them both in your portfolio for two years and did nothing, you would get the same overall compounded return of 8.17%. However, if you were to rebalance the portfolio after the first year by selling some of the US stocks to buy international, which would bring your portfolio back to 50-50, you would increase the compounded return over the two years to 10%. This hypothetical scenario is meant to illustrate the advantage of rebalancing. It may seem counterintuitive to sell your best performing assets each year to buy the lower performing assets, but this is effectively buying low and selling high. This concept is the foundation of multi-asset class investing. If the investments move in different directions, like this example, this diversification and rebalancing can increase your returns with less risk. The key is correlation. Correlation is how similar the returns are between two asset classes. Correlation is measured by a correlation coefficient with values from negative one to one or negative 100% to 100%. A positive correlation means that two asset classes are moving in the same direction in lockstep. When one goes up, the other goes up. A negative correlation means two assets move in the opposite direction. When one goes up, the other goes down. A value of zero means the two assets are not correlated. In our prior example, rebalancing was very useful because the example had a perfect negative correlation over the two years. The benefit of multi-asset class investing and rebalancing is best when you get such negative correlations. Let's look at the effect of correlations on a series of hypothetical investment returns to illustrate the benefits related to correlation. Let's say we have two investments, A and B, over three years, they have correlated returns and the same compounded return. If we invested 50% in investment A and 50% in investment B, we can see the correlation is 100% and the compounded return was roughly the same. The standard deviation, which is a proxy for risk, decreased, but it really didn't change much. Now let's add investment C which is negatively correlated, but has the same compounded return. If we invest 50% in investment A and C, we can see the return has a correlation of negative 100%. In this case, we boosted the return by about half a percent and the standard deviation dropped to about 0%. Now let's add investment D with the same compounded return. If we invest 50% in investments A and D, we can see the correlation is 0%. The benefit to the portfolio was an increase in return by about 0.12% while cutting the standard deviation by almost half. This is a hypothetical example to illustrate the concept of Markowitz's research. However, in the real world, correlations are not this ideal. Here is a correlation matrix from Vanguard showing the correlations of asset classes from about 2015 to 2020. I'll put a link to this below or you can pause the video to study it further. We can see the US stocks have a negative 31% correlation to US government bonds a 75% correlation to European stocks, and a 67% correlation to emerging market stocks. I want to warn you that asset class correlations 
are not constant. This purely represents a single point in time view of these correlations. But correlations of assets change over time in unexpected ways. You cannot just go get the historical correlation data and craft a perfect asset allocation. Correlations and in investment returns will almost certainly be different in the future than in the past. However, you can use past data to make informed decisions about the possible risk and return trade-offs of a portfolio. A useful method for doing this is charting what is called the efficient frontier. I've gone ahead and calculated this from 1970 to 2020 using the S&P 500 and 10-year treasury bonds. This scatter plot has 11 points. At the bottom, you can see a point for 100% 10-year treasury bonds. Then it curves up to the top right at 100% S&P 500. The return is on the y-axis and the standard deviation is on the x-axis. Standard deviation is often a proxy for risk. This is a way to visualize the risk and return trade-offs of a portfolio composed of multiple asset classes. We are just using two for simplicity. While you might think investing in 100% bonds is less risky overall, it wasn't over this time period. In this time period, you could have achieved a higher return with less risk by holding 40% S&P 500 and 60% treasury bonds. In this example, the boost in return is about 60% going from a return of 3.04% to 4.85% with less risk. This is the amazing thing with multi-asset class investing. By combining less correlated assets and rebalancing, you can increase your returns with lower risk. It doesn't always work out this way though. Let's look at the efficient frontier of US and international stocks for each decade between 1970 and 2019. This scatter plot has a lot of data. We have a separate series for each decade. I used a specific symbol for the points that has meaning. A triangle facing up means the US outperformed international during that decade. The triangle facing down means that international outperformed the US during that decade. We can see in the three decades, international outperformed US and two US outperformed. Diversifying across these asset classes didn't help as much in the most recent two decades where the efficient frontier is basically a straight line. This is meant to show that the correlation and risk return trade-offs vary over time. As I mentioned before, portfolio construction isn't an exact science. Some people will run computations over historical data to try to determine the optimal portfolio. If this is what you wanna do, go for it. But I would expect the future to be different from the past. Someone has done this and created what is called the Golden Butterfly Portfolio. I'm going to make a video about the Golden Butterfly Portfolio soon. The primary takeaway is that by combining multiple asset classes in your portfolio and rebalancing annually, you can possibly improve the risk-adjusted return of your portfolio. This works best with asset classes that are less correlated and doesn't really provide much benefit for highly correlated asset classes. This is why diversifying across the S&P 500 and total US stock market index funds wouldn't really add much benefit. Diversifying across international and US stocks is more likely to provide a benefit due to the lower correlation. However, that benefit is not guaranteed. If you're just looking for the highest return possible and don't care about the risk, multi-asset class investing may not be for you. However, if you wanna be more conservative and calculated about the risk in your portfolio, asset allocation is a very important decision. 
Determining your risk tolerance is also critical to deciding your asset allocation. I made another video on risk tolerance, which I'll link below. The last point I want to make is about which asset classes to include in a portfolio. Some people will invest in a dozen asset classes to add diversification. They might invest in large cap stocks, small cap stocks, European stocks, emerging market stocks, real estate, commodities, US treasuries, corporate bonds, municipal bonds, and junk bonds. I personally think this is a little overkill. In general, you want asset classes that have good returns and lower correlations. I think it's sufficient to use total market index funds. Instead of slicing up your exposure to different sub-asset classes, I think it's reasonable to use the broad asset classes. For instance, you could buy a total market US index and a total market international index. Combined, these hold nearly every publicly traded stock in the world with over 11,000 stocks. If you wanted to lower the risk of the portfolio, you could add a total bond market index fund, which holds government bonds, corporate bonds, and other bonds. I made a video on what I believe is the best portfolio for most investors, the three fund portfolio, which I'll link up here and below. This is a personal preference, and it's up to you to decide for yourself. You can apply what you learned about modern portfolio theory to design a portfolio that fits your needs. Let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments below. I put more time and research into this video than any other so far. And I did my best to condense the key takeaways of asset allocation and modern portfolio theory. The topic is pretty broad and deep, so I'll probably make some other videos on the topic. If you receive value from the video and want to support free financial education, please smash the like button, subscribe, and share the video with friends. Thanks for watching. Later.